Suddenly, a ringtone rang. It was my husband's smartphone. Apparently, he had left it at home and gone out. I looked at the call screen, and saw my mother-in-law's name on the screen. I felt bad ignoring the call from my mother-in-law, so I picked up the phone for my husband, who had left his phone at home. What are you doing? It's your daughter's big day, isn't it? A father is going to be late for his daughter's wedding. As soon as I picked up the phone, my mother-in-law, without even giving me a chance to answer, asks me a question right out of the blue. Daughter, what are you talking about? Our daughter passed away five years ago. You know that. Then, from the phone, I heard a young woman's voice asks, "Has Dad still not arrived yet?" Our daughter passed away five years ago, but my mother-in-law did indeed say "daughter," and I hear a young woman's voice. What is this all about? My mind went blank. Linda, why are you answering the phone? My mother-in-law exclaimed to me on the phone, sounding impatient. My mind went blank, and my daughter's smile and memories of the past came back to me in bits and pieces. My husband Jason and I have been married for twenty years. Jason and I had a daughter shortly after we were married. She was a sweet girl with a lovely smile, but she passed away five years due to an illness. Soon after she was born, we found out that she was sick. The doctor told me, "We didn't expect her to live long. There is a possibility that she may die soon." Please be prepared for that. After a long pregnancy, my first child was finally born. When we were told that the child was sick and would not live long, both James and I were depressed and in despair. However, contrary to the doctor's expectations, our daughter lived to be 15 years old. When she was born, we thought we might never see her grow up. But she lived on despite her illness and weakness, and even attended kindergarten, elementary school, and junior high school. There were times when caring for my daughter was difficult, but I was saved by my daughter, who cared for her family more than anyone else, trying to enjoy every moment of her life, and working hard with a smile even through painful treatment. I am truly grateful that my daughter was born. And the time I spend with her is an invaluable part of my life. I am still grateful for the life she lived, and I am still grateful for the time she spent with me. And yet, she was only 15 years old. She would have been 20 now, five years after she passed away. The other day, I saw that there was a reunion of her middle school class in her area. There, I saw my daughter's classmates gathered there. Talking happily and taking pictures together, I wonder what she would have talked about with her classmates if she were still alive. I wonder if she would have taken pictures with her friends. I wonder how my daughter, now an adult, would have lived the rest of her life. The more I saw her classmates shining brightly, the more I could only think of my daughter, who is in the past, wondering what if she were still alive. And I felt indescribably sad, and cried a little on the way home. One Sunday, five years after her death, Jason was out early in the morning for a day. He went fishing with a friend. A few hours after Jason left, his phone rang. I didn't realize it until then, but Jason had forgotten his phone and had left it behind. I checked the call screen, and so it was my mother-in-law. I had bad if I answered Jason's cell phone, but I thought, what if this is an urgent call? And if it was my mother-in-law calling, there would be no particular problem if I answered. As soon as I pressed the call screen, without even a chance for me to answer, my mother-in-law said, in her very first words, "What are you doing? Today is your beloved daughter's big day. It's about to start." A father is going to be late for his daughter's wedding. Tell me quickly where you are. 
I thought it was the wrong number or something. But it was my mother-in-law's name on the screen and her voice on the phone. It occurred to me that maybe my mother-in-law was lost her mind. Well, Jason forgot his phone and went out. I, Jason's wife, Linda, am on it. I tell her on the phone as calmly as I can, even though my head is spinning. What? Did you just say daughter? Our daughter passed away five years ago. You know that, don't you, Grace? I heard an unexpected word on the phone as I did so. Grandma, is Dad not going to make it? It was definitely a young woman's voice. My daughter passed away five years ago, but my mother-in-law said daughter, and the young woman called my mother-in-law grandma. What the hell was this all about? My mind went blank. Linda, why are you answering the phone? My mother-in-law exclaimed to me on the phone, in a panicked tone. At first, I questioned my mother-in-law to get things straightened out. Grace, what is this all about? Who is that daughter on the phone? What is her relationship with Jason? And is this a wedding today? Please explain it all. What should I do? You ask me to explain everything out of the blue. What should I do? It continues like that. My mother-in-law backed up my barrage of questions the whole time and wouldn't answer properly. I later heard that Jason was in the cab heading to the ceremony at this time. The cab got stuck in traffic, and they were late for the ceremony. My mother-in-law was just babbling and wouldn't answer any of my questions. I figured this was getting nowhere, so I got into my parents-in-law's house with a duplicate key, and waited for my mother-in-law and James to return home from the ceremony. When James came home. He was very surprised to see me at his parents' house, but when I explained casually what had happened over the phone, he let his shoulder drop and sighed. I questioned Jason and his mother again about the truth of what had happened today. At first, neither of them would tell me, but when I told them that I would not leave until they answered, they seemed to relent and began to answer in a grumbling manner. The story goes back 20 years. Jason was cheating on me before we were married. He also had a daughter with the other woman, and by some coincidence, the daughter of the affair was the same age as our daughter, who had passed away. The affair partner's daughter grew up to be a thriving young woman, and today was her wedding day. Jason began to tell us that he had gotten busy at work since her daughter was born. Many days he didn't come home because he had to stay overnight at the office, and some days he was away from home for days because he had to go on a business trip. To be honest, it was hard caring for our sickly daughter on my own. In addition to raising a child for the first time, caring for a child who was really around here was harder than I could have imagined. But at the time. I didn't want to meddle in Jason's business affairs. I was grateful that Jason was working and supporting our family, and I believed it was because he loved my daughter as much as I did. That's what made it possible for me to get through each day, even though it was hard. And yet, Jason lied and said he was at work, forcing me to take care of our daughter, while he relaxed gracefully in his other home. And to my surprise. My mother-in-law tolerated James's lifestyle, and at times even provided support for the other family. My mother-in-law thought that our daughter, who was born with a disease, was a failure, and she did not like me for giving birth to such a grandchild. Perhaps because of this, my mother-in-law came to visit my daughter only a few times, and it was always my father-in-law who came to see her a lot. And my daughter looked forward to seeing her grandfather. Now, my father-in-law is overseas for business reasons. Jason and his mother reveal one shocking truth after another. They seemed somehow to be relaxed that the truth was revealed and continued. Jason, you should break up with this woman. 
She ruined your daughter's wedding ceremony day. She's just jealous of her happiness. Maybe mom is right. I've been looking forward to this day for a long time, and you just made it worse. So we're breaking up, right? I mean, break up with me already. I'll pay you what you want in alimony. That'll be enough. After all this time, I couldn't believe them looking down on me. That he was having an affair. That he had an illegitimate child. And that he neglected his deceased daughter. On top of that, they would order me to get a divorce. I felt more sorry for my dead daughter than for myself. If things continued as they were, I told them both that I would be happy to divorce Jason, and ran out of my parents-in-law's house. I returned home and began preparing to divorce by calling a lawyer. Shortly thereafter, I filed the divorce papers. And left the house where Jason and I were living, because I had a lawyer. I was able to get a larger alimony payment from Jason, and the person he was cheating on me with, than a market rate. The day Jason and my mother-in-law were having a shocking conversation at my parents-in-law's house, I actually recorded the conversation. As soon as I left the house I lived with Jason, I sent that recording to my father-in-law. And Jason's company. When my father-in-law heard that recording, he flew back from overseas to see me. My father-in-law had always cared about me as well as our daughter while he was in the states, and that didn't change after he went overseas. In this situation, I was happy that my father-in-law, because he was very dedicated to his work. But in this case. He even interrupted his work overseas to come back to the states. As soon as my father-in-law met me, he apologized. I should have paid more attention to my family. I have caused you so much pain and trouble. I am sorry. I cannot forgive those guys. I will insulate myself from Jason who hurt you, and of course, I will divorce my wife. That's what he told me. The company Jason worked for is owned by my father-in-law. In other words, my father-in-law's insulating Jason meant that Jason would be fired from the company he now works for. Jason was fired from the company after being insulated by his father, and Grace divorced from my father-in-law and had no place to live. They were so resentful that they thought it was all my fault. And they were going to barge into my house. They didn't have a duplicate key, so they started yelling and screaming at the room, which showed no sign of coming out, even when they rang the bell. And they were almost breaking the doorknob. But I had already moved to a different house. Therefore, another stranger was living in the house, where the two stormed out, and the police were called to the commotion. Against the two who suddenly stormed out, I heard that they finally ran out of places to go, and tried to get a hold of the married daughter of the adulterer. So they stormed into the newlywed daughter's house. It seemed like she was home, so they tried to get in, but there was no response from the daughter. Hey, it's me. It's your dad. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, open the door. Grandma's here too. I came to see how you're doing. Please let us in. The daughter realized that they need help, so she tried to ignore them. However, she could not bear to see them staying in front of the house, and reluctantly invited them in, saying that it would disturb the neighbors. At first, they said they were just checking up, but as the conversation progressed, they began to talk about. How unhappy they were, and eventually they even got down on their knees, shamelessly begging for help. But after all, she is the daughter of an unfaithful partner. She turned to her father, Jason, and said, "But to you, my mother was the affair, and I am the daughter of the cheater. But you still supported us, so I called you dad to thank you a little bit. So." Money was the only link between Dad and me. 
Jason is stunned by his daughter's words out of the blue. And I called you grandma because you supported us too. And when you ran out of money, it's our turn to help you because we're her family. You don't know how we have felt all this time. You've been helping us on your own. I didn't ask you. And then she simply cut Jason and his mother off. Is that what you thought all along? Unbelievable. What's going to happen to our relationship now? The daughter just said Grace like a throwaway comment. We have no use for people without money. You have a real family somewhere else. But you have been using us as a family for your affair partner. In the same way, we have been taking advantage of you. Now, if you don't have any money, please leave. We're not a family anymore. Jason and his mother, who had been silently listening to her words, were now trembling with anger. And then they start shaking. What kind of a way to talk to a father? Who has supported you all this time? I thought you were the better granddaughter. But it turns out that you were a failure too. They yelled at her. Grace started screaming, throwing dishes, cushions, and other items in the house, not only at the walls and floor, but also at her granddaughter. Their outburst made a mess of the new house, and the daughter, feeling that she was indeed in danger, called the police. But the police who arrived at the scene saw Jason and Grace, whom no one could touch, and brought them in again. This police action caused Station's daughter to be marked by the neighbors, and her husband also found out that her family was troublesome because of this incident. Because of this, the daughter's husband divorced her quickly, after only one month of marriage. On the other hand, I was able to get a new job at a company owned by my father-in-law, thanks to his arrangement. I had qualifications at great levels, such as a bookkeeper and a computer exam, so I was always ready to work if I wanted to. The reason was that I was always trying to improve my skills to earn money for my daughter's medical expenses in between taking care of her. Because of this, I am now working hard with a salary that is enough to live on my own. My father-in-law was so concerned about me that he cut ties with his own son and divorced my mother-in-law as well, even after the divorce of Jason with me. Not only that, but I am so grateful to my father-in-law for providing me with a new job. I told my father-in-law how sorry and grateful I was, and he said, Please let me do this, because I feel sorry for you too. And I am so grateful to you, Linda, for giving me my one and only granddaughter. My life is so much happier that I had such a sweet granddaughter. Besides, it's normal for families to support each other. Linda, you are a very important family member who gave me a granddaughter. I couldn't stop crying at his words. I think that's all thanks to my daughter. She passed away five years ago. But thanks to her, I was able to break off a bad relationship. And I still have a wonderful relationship with someone who considers me family. I'm really glad I met her. Thank you for being born as my daughter. Let's continue to build a new life together. <laughs>